So you're wondering why I have this mouth and what it has to do with growing plants. Well then stick around. Hello and welcome back to the channel. Today we are going to be potting up and stratifying some Saracenia seeds and some Darlingtonia seeds. But first, before we jump into that, I just want to give you guys an update on the seeds that we planted about three or four days ago. These are the seeds that we planted three days ago, the Drosera auriculata and all these different types of Capensis seeds. Obviously it's only been three days, so nothing has really started growing. But you can see that the top is still at the same level, uh, as in the soil hasn't the soil hasn't fallen down or become compacted or anything, and that's really due to the uh, the perlite, the white stuff. And yes, this is now some rainwater, probably probably used in the last video as well. But yeah, this this system that we have works quite well. We've collected about two hundred liters and it drizzled a little bit for like ten minutes, um, thirty minutes ago. So we collected a little bit more, you might be able to see it in the bucket here, to the water level. Anyway, you guys want to know what a, what a naff has to do with uh, growing some Saracenia seeds and some Darlingtonia seeds. So I'll show you guys that right now. So this is where your questions will be answered. Today we're going to be growing some of these you know, coniferous plants. Hopefully you should know that by now. Saracenia, we have Saracenia flava, Var ornata, Saracenia purpurea subspecies Peperea and Darlingtonia, Darlingtonia californica. So these three species need to be stratified. You have to put them in the fridge for four weeks. That's what we're going to be doing today. I'm going to show you how that actually works. And this is Drosera regii, which um, I'm going to show you guys uh, how to put these guys up. It's a little bit different. They don't need to be stratified, but I'll do it today because this will getting these three species here ready to stratify is going to be super quick and easy. So what you want to do you want to get your sphagnum moss because you're a you're a good grower and you have sphagnum moss. Um, this is just dried sphagnum moss. Uh, this is the Bez Grow brand, I think. Um, you can just click on the link below. This is um, probably like one of the best, like there's maybe three of the best types of sphagnum mosses to get. So definitely get this brand if you can. Remember, just click on the link if you want it. Can't click on any link for a knife because... You can get that from your cupboard. So it is fairly simple to do this, right? You want to just separate it and make sure that the, the sphagnum moss has been pre-wetted. Mine has been pre-wetted. It's been sitting in this tray for about three days now. It's the same moss that we used when we potted up those uh, those other drosera that I just showed you. I got my seeds in little packages like this, in a little Ziplockies. I don't know what you guys might call them, but I call them a Ziploc because it's like a Ziploc kind of thing. Anyway. We have a lot of Saracenia purpurea seeds here and, and less flower and quite a few um, Darlingtonia seeds. But the way that you want to stratify them is that you take your pre-wetted moss and you just li you literally just cut it up. Essentially, it's just, you just want it to, to be cut up and uh, shredded basically, you know, so that there is good contact with the seeds with this moss. You want your moss to be moist so that when you squeeze it there is water but not dripping wet. So just like this, this is maybe a little bit too wet so I'll just squeeze a little bit of water out. But just like this, now it's moist and we know that it won't be waterlogged which is what we don't want. So this should be enough sphagnum moss for what we need. So because our um, Saracenia and Darlingtonia came in little Ziplocs, we're going to leave them in the Ziplocs. So obviously if yours came in paper, which this should, should come in paper or like wax paper, you, you get a Ziploc, a small Ziploc like this, one that is airtight. And essentially what you want to do, I'm just going to do this, I um, want to separate them a little bit. Might even just cut these down a little bit more. What I'm going to do is I'm going to take them out so I can mix them better. You don't have to do this, but I just want to do this. This is the first time I've ever done it like this. Okay, so all the seeds are out. They're now in my hand. 
And now what I'm just gonna do is I'm gonna put them into the palm of my hand like this. And just mix it around like that. In the palm of my hand would be better. Actually, I don't think you guys should use your palm of your hand like this. Rather, if you can, just keep it in the bag and shake it around. But I just wanted to get it out to um, make sure that I can see how they are mixed and then show you guys. Okay, so yeah, you, you can't, you guys won't be able to see this on camera, but I can see that they are all mixed up in there. Maybe you can see that seed there. There's a couple here, but there's one right there. So yeah, essentially get them all mixed up, just like that. And you wanna put that straight into your little baggie. Oh, one seed fell. This is why I suggest you guys don't do this. So there we go, they're all in. You can see one seed right there. I hope you guys can see it right there. Um, obviously the rest are all mixed in. There's another guy there. Anyway, they're all now nicely mixed in. Make sure that there is good air inside of the Ziploc. Cool, so one is done, just like that. Make sure, I'm making sure that I have no seeds on my hands. Remember, do not do what I did. I just wanted to show you guys. But if you can, Try to just place it into the bag like I will do now. So we're gonna get some more of the sphagnum moss. And this is what you guys should do, what everyone should actually do. Just get some more of this. Get your bag, open it up, and just put the sphagnum moss inside. Just drop it in. And then when it's like a little bit full like this, close it up, shake the seeds around, get them all mixed up in there. So they're everywhere. You don't want them to be all concentrated in one area. Then you can open it back up and put some more in. And just complete, uh, I mean, just continue doing this process until the bag is completely, almost completely packed, just like the previous one. Close it and shake it again. That's about as full as we want it. So remember, open it up, make sure it has good air, it's not very compact. And there we go. I want to do the exact same thing for the Darlingtonia because they also need the stratification. So let me explain a little bit to you guys about how you want to grow these plants. We're going to put these plants into our fridge for four weeks because that's the, that's the recommended time that you want to stratify your um, seeds for, your Darlingtonia seeds or your um, uh, Saracenia seeds. So that around four weeks is the best. So that's exactly what we'll do. Then. After the four weeks, you take them out and you place the soil like this. You're gonna cut open the bag. Well, I have to because the bag's so small. You're gonna cut open your bag. You're going to um, place the soil on top of, place this media, sorry, on top of your soil. And you wanna ensure that the soil is then, the whole like pot that you planted the seeds on is encased in a Ziploc or something that's gonna help keep the humidity high and obviously keep this in an area that doesn't get a lot of sunlight something like shaded, no direct sunlight, because you don't want the seeds to overheat and be cooked. So you want to do that. And the reason why you want to do that is because currently in the Ziploc bags, you can already see the amount of humidity here. The plants are going to be at 100% humidity, the seedlings as well. So obviously they, they're used to 100% humidity. If you just take them now, like directly, you directly shove them onto soil that has, you know, 0% humidity basically, then the seedlings will die. So that's obviously not something you want. So you zip lock it up, keep it summer shaded, watch them start to sprout. And every week you cut a small little snip off of the top of the zip lock or of, or of the bag that you have encased them in. You can slowly acclimate, accl acclam acclam acclimate. So they can slowly acclimate to the environment that you will be providing them. If you guys wanna see a follow up of these videos, just literally subscribe. In four weeks time, we'll be taking them out and I'll be doing that whole process with you. So yeah, you guys, if you want to see that, make sure you stay around. And um, if you don't want to see that, then take what I, take the advice that I've just given you and make sure you stick to it and make sure you also use the correct soil. Um, Darling Tonia, I find that they prefer to have, sorry, there's people outside. They prefer to stay in sphagnum moss under my care. Sphagnum moss uh, in a ratio of one is to one is to peat. So sphagnum moss peat. Sorry, people literally 
throwing crackers outside. Saracenia, they should be grown in peat. Uh, a ratio of one is to one is to peat and perlite. Um, you can also watch me do this later on, but you can also grow them in sphagnum moss, but I've never experienced that, so I can't help you with that. But yeah, essentially put them on top of the soil, keep it all, um, what is it, humid. W watch them grow a little bit. And then when, when they've started growing, cut it off so you can put them into their seedling growing area. Now, the next part, which we need, no, I'm just kidding, we don't need it now. We need to get our Drosera regii planted. I'll be growing my Drosera regii sphagnum moss. I'm gonna take this pot, sorry, lay down the little ropes that you see me do in the previous video, the little ropes of um, sphagnum to prevent any like soil and stuff coming out. But even for this, that's not really necessary because we don't have any peat. I will just take, oh, it looks like some, some reeds or something. I'm gonna take some of this sphagnum and simply just lay it on the bottom because we don't have to be, we don't have to um, roll this one up really as much as we rolled up in the previous videos. You know what, actually maybe I will because I keep falling through the hole, so. So I hope that you guys realize that it is quite obviously not um, essential really to wrap up the bottom of the pots like I am, especially like this because it's quite tedious and it will take a long time to do if you're doing like hundreds of pots, right? So I'm just doing it because I want to conserve the sphagnum I have and ensure that there is a good seal at the bottom. But really, if you have moss, like too much moss or something, just literally just dump it in. And it's especially for this, um, for the Darlingtonia, I mean the, the Drosera regia, because we're not going to be growing it in peat, um, we don't have to plug up these holes super tight. I'm really just doing it because I don't want little pieces sticking out and that's just personal preference. So I have the, the moss in here all mixed up with the perlite. And now I'm just gonna put it straight into the pot. Remember you need to compact it down a little bit so that there is good contact with the bottom um, the water level, well, the bottom moss with the water level so that the water can actually flow up. I tend to top water my Drosera regi, so even though this, you know, um, tamping it down a little bit is not very necessary for me, I still recommend that you, you do do it, even if you are top watering. So we've used all this sphagnum moss, there's a little bit too much, uh, I put a little bit too much extra peat. I did put a, a bite, um like just over half a pot because I wanted to make sure that there was a lot of perlite. If you put the perlite in and you mix it into the sphagnum and like you pick up a strand and it's all stuck on, that's like uh, a good amount to have, you know? So what I'm gonna do now, I tamp down this top bit just a little bit. And what I'm gonna do now is that I'm going to go and water, top water the sphagnum moss so that uh, it can compact naturally how it would naturally from top watering just so we can see the level and also um, to ensure that all the moss is adequately hydrated. What I'm just going to do is just this. Very easy. Some people prefer using silica sand and I do too but as I said in the previous video it's quite expensive um, especially for the amounts that I'll be growing in and also here in Australia you get different sizes of, of sphagnum. You get like this is medium size, so you get you get medium, you get fine, you get super fine, you just get extra super fine, you get medium, large, jumbo. This is now watered up enough. I'm gonna put this here to the side, and I'm gonna show you guys the next step. So obviously, these seeds are quite small, right? If we just throw them onto that mixture right now, they might not make good contact with the soil. So what you wanna do, so when I get a little bit more sphagnum moss, just enough to cover the top, like just about this much and just hydrate it. So I put it into the pot and I squeeze it down. I squeeze the sphagnum moss all the way down to the bottom so it can soak up the water just like a sponge would. And then that is adequately hydrated now. A little bit, little parts of it might not be, so I just wet it again. But yeah, essentially that's it. Give it a light squeeze to get out all the, 
excess water. And now you wanna chop this up and you wanna lay it on top of the pot that you just created now. And there we go, it is all cut up quite fine now. Uh, I'm happy with it. So what you wanna do is bring your moss. You just wanna literally top dress it, just place it on top. And if you guys did see the previous video, you know that I, that I quite dislike having pots that are not all the way to the top. Um, I understand why sometimes you don't want it to go all the way to the top, but really I can't deal with it. I really dislike it so much. And this looks like it will be just a little bit less than what I need, which really sucks. I will cut up a little bit more. Like I will quite literally cut up just a little bit more just to fill in these gaps here, um, because I can't deal with it not being flat at the top. But if you're gonna be growing from seed, and let's say I had stratified these regia seeds in 100% humidity, or if I'm gonna be putting a, a dome on top of them to keep them at 100% humidity, then keeping a gap would be great because you can just put a cling wrap and um, cling wrap or cling film, I don't know what you guys call it, over the top and you can poke holes every week and then you eventually just take the whole thing off. But as I say, I really can't deal with um, it not being 100% to the top. So let me just go get some more moss and we can finish this off. Now you can see I'm happy because I can't see the perlite underneath and it's raised to the top in all parts of the pot. And hopefully this will come back to life and be a nice source of live sphagnum. And there we go, our pot is now ready. So let's put this to the side once again. And I'll be using the exact same method that I used in the previous video, except I'll use a smaller piece of paper. Make sure that your surface is dry, isn't. Put down your paper, and you wanna get your seeds onto the paper. So what I will do now, is I'm gonna take this baggie, and I'm gonna cut it open. So I'm gonna take this baggie, make sure that there's no seeds at the top, cut it open put all the seeds onto this paper. And I'm simply only doing this because they have to be in plastic when they're coming into Australia. So you don't really want to send um, seeds in plastic and you don't really want to get them in plastic. Or you don't really want to store them in plastic. You want to store them in wax paper. That's kind of the best. Cause then they just do this and they stick inside and you struggle, struggle quite a bit to get it out, which I am struggling right now. Okay, so I'm just gonna do these seeds for now because they're out and I don't really want them to fly anywhere. So you just take them, lightly sprinkle them over. Cool, and I'm gonna get the rest out. Here's the last two of our seeds sprinkled on. Packages are uh, irreparable. It's done its job, Thank thankfully for the package. Obviously recycle this. And then, do not forget your label. And now what you want to do is sprinkle it uh, with some, well spray it rather, sorry, with some water so that the seeds can make good contact with the water and with the, with the soil surface. Literally just sprinkle it like this. And there we go, our regia is done. Our three packs of seeds are also done. So let me just show you guys exactly how I put these into the fridge. Yeah, yeah, at the, whatever this is, vegetables or something. Put them just like this. Oh, you guys can't even see it. Diantonia, purple rare, Saracenia flower. Just like that, right at the top. Different for everyone. And now put a timer on your phone for four weeks. So guys, I hope that this was informative for you guys and this can help you grow your plants, your Saracenia, Darlingtonia, your Regi, um, and, and learn how to stratify them. Um, I am going to keep this, I wanted to keep this Regi here. I wanna keep it in a separate tray to the trays outside, out here where it is not quite dark. I wanna keep them in a separate tray because when your Regi start coming up, when they have about between two, two to four um, true leaves, so sticky leaves. You want to start fertilizing them because what happens is that they starve themselves to death, and you don't want to have your, you know, your regia seeds starving themselves to death. So, get an Osmocote, um, inside and outside, smart release, high nitrogen to like 16, 8, 8 or something, just high nitrogen. Um, if you don't know what the what the nitrogen is on a fertilizer, um, usually they have three numbers because like let's say 888. 
and it goes NPK, yeah, NPK, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium, NPK, high nitrogen, you get those little Osmocote pellets, and you put two pellets, about half an inch, so about 1.75 centimeters, or just say two centimeters away from the base of the young plants, and two pellets per plant, just put them next to it. Or if it's in one pot like this, you just, you know, just kind of like scatter them around a little bit. And then you water the fertilizer from the top so that the uh, baby plants can have some food and, you know, start growing I mean, to adult plants and not dying. So yeah, as I say, in four weeks time, we're gonna take those out of the fridge. Hopefully these guys will be up in about one or two, two weeks. And then we will have some great plants to grow together. So thanks guys. Remember, if you enjoyed this, remember to like. Um, don't forget to subscribe to catch our future videos and yeah, I'll see you guys later.